Hello and welcome to the latest edition of the Stats Show with Rovers Chat. I'm here today to talk to you about Lewis Travis, who is one of our Player of the Month competition for August, who took home just under half the vote ahead of Stuart Downing, Bradley Johnson and Derek Williams. So let's have a look at how Travis has started the season and first of all, just an overall look at him as a player. He moved, he's from Merseyside originally and he was playing in the Liverpool Academy but obviously thought he had a better chance of breaking through at Rovers. We signed him on a one year, initial one year deal in 2017 and played through our academy and impressed in the under 23s. Played a lot of time at right back there but since moving into central midfield has been a bit of a revelation. He broke into the first team, having impressed in the pre-season friendlies last season. Play, has played 32 games last season and has been an ever-present so far this season, starting six games and also coming off the bench against Sheffield United in the Carabao Cup. His partnership in the midfield with Bradley Johnson is one of the main differences to this year's team compared to this time last year where we were playing Smallwood and Evans and it's all part of Mowbray's change to hopefully a more footballing oriented style. I'm surprised that Travis hasn't had more recognition uh, nationally. No one seems to talk about him really outside of the club, which is to our benefit at the moment. Um, We'll talk a little bit about why that might be. Uh, later on when we look at what he's actually been doing so far this season. Um, but it was key for us that he signed a new deal in July of this year. At the time, Mowbray gave quotes to the uh, Even Telegraph saying the overriding aspect is his physicality. He just runs. Um, he, told, he says he'll tackle his granny, which I don't think his granny is going to be playing against him anytime soon, but I understand what he's coming across with there. Um, he, Mowbray does say he needs to improve on his technicality. He references there the the new style that he wants to play, which we talked about in the last stat show. So in August then, he, like I say, made six appearances, one substitute appearance, played the most minutes of any midfielder. He's not scored a goal this season, and he's had one assist, which was in the last match against West Brom, which we'll look at later on. Going into a little bit more depth then in his passing statistics, um, the, all these statistics are from whoscored.com and they are per 90 minutes. So he averages just under one key pass per game. He averages around about 36 passes a match with a pass success rate of just over 80%. And um, no shots so far this season. So that's something that we should be looking at him developing. He's playing a little bit more of the anchor role at the moment with Johnson having a bit more license to get forward. Johnson's had quite a few shots. He's also out past Travis uh, this season, where Travis was the key kind of creator last season from deep. He's kind of played second fiddle a little bit to, to Johnson in the number of passes that he's been hitting and also the key passes and the shots. So he's played possibly a more understated role going forward, but he's compensated for that defensively, which we'll look at in a second. I just wanted to bring up his pass map against Charlton here. Uh, this is the first game of the season. You can see that he sticks pretty rigidly in this game to his kind of right-hand side of the central midfield role. About half of his passes um, in the defensive half and then half in the attacking area. Um, You can see only one pass from inside the box. Um, And if we move on to his one against Hull, it's even more condensed into that middle third. Although you would say more passes in the attacking half this time than in the defensive half, which is good to see. But still, nothing anywhere near the box is really there. But if you look at the one against West Brom, so the most recent matches, I don't know whether he was given slightly different instructions for this match or whether it was just a case of how the game went, but he had a lot more spread of his passes, so there are a few more closer to the box, although not as many as what you would like. Um, but also, probably because of the pressure that we were under in parts of that game, a few more defensively. So his game's kind of spread out there against West Brom, which is interesting. We talked about him being more defensively minded this season. If we look at his stats defensively, again, per 90 minutes, this is, he averages the highest number of tackles in the squad. Um, He also does at least one interception per match and clearances he doesn't do as many of, but and I'll just bring up his tackle map against West Brom. So it says we averaged 3.3 tackles 
per game so far this season against West Brom he did 12 tackles which is an enormous number and the closest the the one furthest up the pitch there is the one which we'll see in a minute was the actual the assist for Dak's goal in the first minute you can see five of his tackles have been in in our half which means that he's up with the press. He's the one that kind of like is key to the press, really. Once you get past the first line of the attackers, he's the one that's always up there trying to win the ball in the second phase. He's also not afraid of putting in a last-ditch tackle, which he's obviously done in the penalty area there against West Brom. So that side of his game is definitely on point at the moment. So now we'll just have a look at some of his um, work individually on the pitch and a couple of video clips. So we're just going to take a look at the assists now that Lewis Travis made against West Brom. First minute of the match, away from home, and we're doing a high press as West Brom likes to play it out from the back. So we're going to start it, I'm going to put it in slow motion, I'm going to start it with the goalkeeper. So we've got the centre forward pressing there, Sam Gallagher's pressing, and then you can just see, if I just stop it there, Travis is up against Romain Sawyers in the midfield. The ball's been played out to Bartley. The eventual goal scorer, Bradley Dack, is just lurking in there. Um, and this is one thing that we know that Travis does really well, supports the press. You can see that that's just about to be played in there now, and you think there's not that much danger. He's got quite a lot of space to make up, but because he's on the move already, he gets to Sawyers just as he's about to take the ball. It's a poor pass from Bartley. Sawyers isn't quite sure where Travis is, but gets there, intercepts it, strong in the tackle, and I suppose he's quite fortunate in a way that it does break to Dak, but break it does and Dak does what he does best and from the edge of the area he just finds the bottom corner so that's I suppose the, the main um, contribution that, that Travis has made to our season so far he hasn't had a single shot as we discussed earlier but he's at least produced the assist for that goal we were hoping that would go on to better things but obviously we lost that game 3-2 as you can see he's delighted with that start there in that celebration this shows a different side to Travis's game. Um, late on in the Cardiff match, this was, we're pressing for a winner. And um, he's just about to receive the ball from a throw in here, and it doesn't look to be much on. So we just start the video here. Um, obviously, feels the pressure from behind. Initially, looks to try and turn out and play play safe, but then turns back at, across and um, makes a little bit of space. And this is where he shows good strength, first of all, good skill. Tucks no little touch, he's very aware of his surroundings, puts a fantastic ball into the box, and this creates our best chance of the game. So it comes directly from his quality play. First of all, we lose the first header, but then it's forced to Williams, and those of you who are at the match will remember this cannoning off the post, and that was, I think it was the 83rd minute, and that was pretty much our only opportunity of getting the winner there so he did well there to create some space and, and get a quality ball in and good to see him contributing in that final third so to conclude on lewis travis i think he's well deserving of his player of the month award he's one of my favorite players in the current squad probably the favorite player in the current squad just the way that he carries himself on the pitch the way that he just gets stuck in but he's also full of quality on the ball you can see it every time he picks the ball up I think he's key to the way that Mowbray wants to play. And him and Johnson complement each other quite nicely. They have enough similarities, but they have slight differences that makes them a good partnership. And I think that's a solid base to build upon for us. Um, and long may it continue that he doesn't get the recognition that he deserves outside of Ewood. You don't see him very much on the um, highlight reel. You don't see him very much on the quest. So, and you don't see that many people talking about him on Twitter either, which is a good thing for us. And if we can keep him under wraps, he's a real jewel for us. Thank you for watching this. And if you voted for Travis, then I hope I've done him justice for you. If you didn't vote for Travis, then hopefully you can still get some interest out of this. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. All the information is in the notes below. And hopefully see you again soon. Bye.